The sheet metal flat wall is a type of secondary wall. In other words, once you have a primary wall like an extrude or a planar wall, you can create walls attached to them like flange walls and flat walls. To create a flat wall, click on the icon in the ribbon and just like with the flange wall, you want to pick the edge on the opposite side of where you want the wall created. So for example, if I want the wall created sort of on the top side of the part, I'm going to select this opposite bottom edge. One thing to note about flat walls is that you can place them only on a single edge. That's a big difference between a flat wall and a flange wall. A flange wall can go to tangent edges, from two chains, surface loops, etc. So you can end up creating multiple walls at once, but not so with the flat wall. And whereas the flange wall is sort of like a sweep feature, we are defining the side profile. The flat wall is sort of more like an extrude where you're defining the shape of the wall itself, sort of like a sketch. All right, let's take a look at a few of the different controls. First off, you'll notice that I have a bunch of different drag handles on the computer screen. So you can use them to change the height of the different features, or you could double click on the dimensions to enter in values uh, explicitly. Also, we have a drag handle to change the angle. And just like with the other one, you can double click and you can change to say that I want this to be at 60 degrees. And we also have a couple of drag handles on the side to change this to what is referred to as a partial wall. From the dashboard, I'm going to use the drop down list to change the angle back to 90 so it's easier for you to see. And let's take a look at a few of the other different shapes. You have four standard shapes. Besides rectangle, there's also trapezoid. You can see that there are quite a few dimensions available for this one. I'm going to click on the shape tab to show you that you can also configure the dimensions from there. Besides trapezoid, there is an L shape. And if you want the L on the other side, all you have to do is drag the heights opposite so the L is going from the other side. And there's also the T shaped. With user defined, you're going to use the shape tab to define a sketch. I'll click on the sketch button, go into sketcher. You'll notice that you have a couple of points as references, and then you can just start sketching whatever shape that you want. There's a funky shape, hit the check mark, and there you see what I've generated. If you like this shape, you could use Save As to store this out in a .sec file to use over and over again, and you could use the Open button to retrieve those .sec files. I'm going to go back to the drop-down list and change to something simple like a rectangle, and also show you that I have an option in here called Teeth Flat. The reason that I have this other additional type of wall is because of a config.pro option I have set. If I go to File Options, Configuration Editor, there's an option called Flat Shape Sketches Directory. And in this folder on my computer, I have a .sec file for a predefined shape. In addition to that, if you have any .sec files that are appropriate to use in either Sketcher Palette Path or 2D Palette Path, it'll list those .sec files as well, but I don't have any appropriate for flat walls in there. And so if I go to the drop-down list and choose Teeth Flat, here is that predefined SEC shape that I have on my stored on my computer. All right, let's take a look at a few of the other different controls in here. And again, let's go back to something simple like a rectangle shape. Here we have the ability to have a bend on our edge there. And right now it's using a bend radius of the thickness. If I go to the drop down list, I could choose also two times the thickness as a predefined value, or you could type in values that you want to use like 0.5. This button allows you to turn off whether you have a bend at all. And this drop down list allows you to change whether you are dimensioning to the inside surface of the bend or the outside surface of the bend or using the 
uh, default parameter value of inside. And most likely you're probably going to want to dimension to the inside because that is how most sheet metal manufacturers operate. All right, let's take a look at some of the other different choices. We already took a look at the placement tab and the shape tab. Let's go to the offset tab. And for this one, I'm going to use the drop down list to change to a left view. And if you check the box for offset wall with respect to the attachment edge, the default is automatic. In other words, the inclusion of this particular wall is keeping with the same length dimensions of the primary wall to which it is attached. But from this drop down list, you could change add to part edge. And you'll notice that this is being added to the end of the primary wall that it is attached to. And for the next option, I'm going to make this a partial wall again by dragging in these drag handles. For the other option, you could choose by value. And with by value, I could actually drag this out so it ends up creating an extension of the primary wall. And I can grab that drag handle and drag it to the inside as well. From the relief tab, I can control the shape of the relief in order to create this wall. And you could check the box to define each side separately. And for side one right now, it's using rip relief. You could also choose stretch relief and configure in the different values for that. We can also do rectangular relief. And with rectangular relief, you'll notice that there are a bunch of other different controls. So for example, we could choose instead of up to bend using a blind value and you could specify here it has two times the thickness or I could just type in the length that I want to use. And for the depth, you could use through all to next or a blind depth for the relief. And here it has the width of it. Again, this is using the thickness. It also has two times the thickness. Or you could use previously entered values or type in the value that you want to use. From uh, the drop down list, let's change to ob round, which is sort of having a rectangle that is rounded on one side. And here, instead of blind, we could choose up to bend or tangent to bend. And again, change the depth options for it as well as the width. So that is side one. Here we have side two. If I click the radio button for side two right now, it's using rip relief. And again, you could choose what other kind of relief that you want there and configure the different values. All right, there are a couple other different tabs on the dashboard. Here we have bend allowance, and by default, it's using the part settings, or you could define it in the feature. Again, unless I mentioned this in the other video, if you're not a sheet metal manufacturer, you probably really shouldn't be messing around with bend allowance because sheet metal manufacturers know the properties and heuristic data for the metals that they have from their vendors and suppliers. And they also know their own machine, so they know what size blank to cut in order to get the fully formed dimensions, the values uh, that they should be. All right, and lastly, there's the properties tab. You can use this to change the name of the feature. And when you're happy with how your wall is configured, you could hit the check mark or the middle mouse button and your flat wall is created in the model. I hope you liked this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.